The horse's digestive system begins in the mouth. He uses the teeth at the front of the mouth, which you can see when you peel his lips back, just here. These are the incisors, and they cut and bite the food. He then uses his tongue to pass the food to the back of his mouth, where he chews it and grinds it using the molars. From the horse's mouth we go to the esophagus and from this point on the digestive system can be thought of as a muscular tube with various enlargements along the way. The esophagus itself has muscles that wrap around the tube so that they contract and relax and literally squeeze the food through the digestive system and that's a process known as peristalsis. From the esophagus we go to the horse's stomach, which is this yellow part of the digestive system. And it's divided into two main regions. The top half is known as the squamous region, and the bottom half is the gastric region. And it's the gastric region which is where all the digestive enzymes and juices and acids are actually produced. The horse has its own built-in protection system in the bottom half of the stomach to actually stop the acid eating away at the stomach lining. However, it doesn't have that in the top half, so it relies on the presence of fibre being eaten and actually sitting in the stomach to protect it. It acts as a physical barrier and also from saliva that the horse produces as he chews. The more he chews, the more saliva he produces, which helps to keep the stomach healthy. And we know that horses chew more when they have um, high fibre diets. The stomach is about the size of a rugby ball and it's a fairly rigid structure. It doesn't stretch to accommodate large meals. So it's very important that we stick to feeding very small amounts at any one time. Hence the rule of feeding little and often. And we'd recommend a maximum of one and a half kilos of feed at any one time. Okay, next we go to the horse's small intestine and it's called small because it has a small diameter. It's actually quite long in length, about 20 metres, which is the length of two double-decker buses. It's made up of three distinct regions. The first part is the duodenum, the middle part is the jejunum and the end part is the ilium. Claire's going to demonstrate how important it is for the horse to have a continuous trickle of feed coming through the digestive system. As a herbivore, the horse is designed to eat for 16 to 18 hours of every day, almost continuously having food passing through. When we domesticate horses and try and meal feed them, we end up with periods of time where the gut doesn't have as much food in. And as you can see, it's very easy to tangle the gut up and tie it into knots, which potentially could cause colic symptoms. However, if we replicate the horse's natural diet by feeding lots of fibre, it becomes much more difficult for the gut to manoeuvre and become entangled. In other words, you've got feed keeping it nice and plump, as Claire's showing there. The small intestine is the site of absorption for protein, fats and oils, and some soluble carbohydrates, such as starch that you'd find in cereals. And if you do need to use any cereals in your horse's diet, it's important to try and use cooked ones, as they are much more digestible. It's the same as you or I cooking our potatoes before we eat them. We wouldn't eat them raw because they wouldn't be very digestible. So if we cook the cereals for the horse, it means they can absorb the starch that they contain in the small intestine, and it doesn't pass through into other areas of the digestive system where it can cause problems like colic. From here on in, we're talking about the large intestine, and the large intestine we've split up into a number of different parts. The first part we have here is the cecum, and we tend to refer to the cecum as a large fermentation vat. Um, this is where the fibre will begin to be broken down, and fibre is broken down by the process of fermentation. 
There are millions of bacteria that reside in the cecum and these are responsible for breaking down um, the fibre. It's a very, very slow process. You get a number of byproducts produced um, in the cecum. Um, so there will be heat produced. Now this is really important because this will help to keep your horses warm. It's like a central heating system for horses. There will also be gas produced and um, ensuring the horse has got plenty of fibre in the, the digestive system will help to move the, the gas along the remainder of the digestive system to help keep the digestive system healthy. The next part of the large intestine is the large colon. This is followed by the small colon. The large colon is given its name because of the large diameter. We will continue to get fibre being broken down by fermentation as it passes along the colon and into the, into the small colon. And these nutrients will be absorbed through the gut lining. In the small colon, we will get um, the reabsorption of water. We've had lots of digestive juices secreted along the way and these will be reabsorbed to help keep the horse hydrated. As we pass further along the small colon, we'll have faecal balls begin to form. The last part of the digestive system is the rectum, and this is a st basically a storage area for waste material. Um, this will accumulate so any undigested fibres, um, bacteria and cells that have died um, will accumulate here until your horse passes droppings.